Hello and welcome to another installment of Mr. Chazen's AP Government Neighborhood. Today we present our second episode, Writing the Perfect SCOTUS Comparison Essay. Remember, this is one of four AP Government essays that you will see on the AP test. Today we're going to go over some helpful tips and techniques to help you score as high as you can on the SCOTUS essay. So let's take a look at what this question has to offer. The keys to writing a perfect SCOTUS essay are uh, a lot easier than what we have in other uh, essays. Uh, first of all, uh, it's just an easier essay because you know what the topic is going to be. You know it's a Supreme Court case. You know that there are only 15 uh, required cases to know. Uh, and so it's a lot easier to prepare. The other thing is that out of the three questions that they're going to ask, you pretty much know what two of the three questions are going to look like. And we're going to uh, go over that in just a second. So in order, again, to master this one, you have to know uh, and uh, become uh, fluent in the 15 Supreme Court cases uh, that AP requires you to know. So for my students, um, I ask them that they know the issue of the case. What is the case about? What's the outcome of the case? Uh, what was the decision that the Supreme Court made? And what was their reasoning behind that decision? And also, what was the topic? Uh, what clause of the Constitution or what right are we discussing? Or what did they elaborate on? So if you know those elements of each Supreme Court case, uh, you'll be in great shape to answer this question. And uh, for those of you who are interested in the video description page, I'm going to link up a couple of the charts that I have my students go over, and you're more than welcome to use those uh, to help you uh, prepare for this question. Uh, and finally, uh, again, like we said before, questions one and two are likely to be the same no matter what case they're talking about. Um, question three is sort of the wild card. Um, so uh, in essence, you can really prepare for two thirds of this question pretty well uh, and know what the question is going to look like. Um, the other thing that you're going to have to do is take some time and read. Uh, and, and if you are a highlighter or you are somebody who likes to mark up uh, readings, that, that may not be a bad decision uh, as we go into the description of the case um, that AP is going to present to us uh, for this question. So in order to master the question, uh, again, question number one is likely to ask you uh, what is the common issue or constitutional clause. Um, and they're going to ask this as an identify question. So the good thing is, is that it doesn't take much to answer this part of the question. Um, Basically, what is the topic of both of the cases? And um, even if you can't remember what uh, the uh, required case is, you should be able to answer this question strictly based off of the reading that they give you uh, on the non-required case. Um, and, and you'll know that the topic or the clause is going to be the same. Um, and so for it could be something as simple as federalism, it could be gerrymandering. It could be uh, speech regarding the First Amendment. Um, so when they're talking about a topic, they're just talking about uh, an overall theme that both of the cases have in common. Now that's different than a constitutional clause. Here, AP is asking what part of this Constitution specifically do both cases deal with? So we're not talking about a broad topic like the previous one, we are talking about what specific part of the Constitution is being discussed by both parts. And it's going to be some sort of clause. It's going to be either something like the Commerce Clause or the Necessary and Proper Clause. Do not say First Amendment. You're going to have to be more specific than that. You know that there are many clauses within the First Amendment. So, for instance, it could be the First Amendment and the Free Exercise Clause or First Amendment and the Establishment Clause. So, if they ask you what it's the constitutional clause, you need to be as specific as possible. It is not going to be a generalized topic. It is going to be a specific clause. 
Uh, and don't just say an amendment. An amendment isn't a clause. They're going to want you to dig deeper. Uh, so, for instance, it might be the 14th Amendment and the Equal Protection Clause. You have to give that much detail. Uh, for the second question, they're going to ask you how the outcomes of the case are either similar or different. Um, basically, what does that mean? Um, if the cases are similar, then you know that the outcomes were both ruled constitutional or they were both ruled unconstitutional. And so your job is just to explain how each case was ruled constitutional or unconstitutional. And the answer is going, or the, the outcome is going to be the same. You just have to provide the details as to how each case was decided. Um, and so for this one, you again need to talk about both cases, not just one or the other. They want you to compare. And so in order to compare, you've got to talk about both cases. Do not discuss any other case other than the two that they have asked you within the question. Um, so detail your answer and curtail your answer to the two Supreme Court cases that are within the question. If the uh, outcomes are different, then you know that one case was ruled constitutional and the other case was ruled unconstitutional. And you would have to explain how the Supreme Court came to both of those different decisions. Um, and again, you would talk about both cases. Um, and again, if you're not sure about the required case, you at least know that the uh, case that AP is going to provide you is going to tell you whether or not the Supreme Court ruled it constitutional or unconstitutional, and therefore you can use that as a guide for your required case to help spark your memory. Um, once again, for this one, you have to explain both cases and do not explain any other case. Do not discuss any other case. Limit it to just the two um, that are discussed in the question. So let's practice. Um, and so this is one that AP has given us uh, as far as a practice question. Uh, read along with me. Monthly town board meetings in Greece, New York, open with a prayer given by clergy selected from the congregations listed in a local directory. But nearly all the local churches were Christian. So nearly all of the participating prayer givers were two. A lawsuit was filed alleging that the town violated the Constitution by preferring Christians over other religious groups and by sponsoring sectarian prayers. Petitioners sought to limit the town to inclusive and ecumenical prayers that referred only to a generic God. In the ensuing case, Town of Greece v. Galloway, 2014, the Supreme Court held in a 5-4 decision that no constitutional violation existed. The majority opinion stated that the legislative prayer in this situation lent gravity to the public business, reminded lawmakers to transcend petty differences to pursue a higher purpose, reflected values that were a part of the nation's heritage, provided a spirit of cooperation, and celebrated the changing of seasons. The audience was primarily lawmakers themselves, and though many bowed their heads during the prayer, they did not solicit similar gestures by the public. It was delivered as a ceremonial portion of the town meeting. So the three questions are, identify the constitutional clause that is common to both Greece v. Galloway, which is the case that they just described, and Engel v. Vital, which is one of the 15 required cases that you have to memorize. Based on the constitutional clause identified in A, explain why the facts of Engel v. Vital led to a different holding than in Greece v. Galloway. And finally, describe an action that members of the public who disagree with the holding in Greece v. Galloway could take to limit uh, this case. Okay, a couple of things right off the bat in the questions. Number one, uh, you see that question A discusses or wants to know about the constitutional clause. So they're not asking for a general topic. They are asking for a specific constitutional clause. What part of the Constitution uh, are they talking about? Now, this is one of the complaints that many people have about SCOTUS question. If you get A wrong, it makes it somewhat difficult to then get B right. 
because if you don't have the proper constitutional clause, you're going to then probably talk about the wrong clause in part B. And so this is how it can become dangerous where an answer, a wrong answer in A can also lead to a wrong answer in B. So this is why you gotta make sure that you really know your cases so that you don't mess A and B up. Um, it's very hard to get A wrong, but B right, or vice versa. So um, that's one of the difficulties in this test or in this question. Um, for B, you notice how uh, the AP question says that they had different outcomes. So we'll talk about that, but that gives us a huge clue into what Engel v. Vital is going to rule because we know how Greece v. Galloway ruled because of the description above. And then the wild card question is letter C, to describe an action that members of the public who disagree with the holdings could take to limit its impact. Um, and so this one is a the wild card question, but the good thing about it is, is that there are a number of potential right answers. There is not just one right answer. In this case, you uh, I'm gonna highlight three to four po possible uh, answers. So let's take a look at how I would answer the three questions. For question A, uh, we know that uh, both Galloway v. Green and Engel v. Vital, which was about the New York School Board writing prayers for students in New York public schools, uh, both deal with the establishment clause of the First Amendment. Um, and so I, all I need to do is identify that it's the establishment clause of the First Amendment, and then I've got to close my loop by just basically explaining what I just did. So this is literally the answer for uh, part A. It's just two sentences. Um, and notice how I didn't just say the First Amendment. I was specific in what clause of the First Amendment is the right answer. So this is my answer for part A. Very straightforward, very quick, which then leads you to go on to some more time that you'll spend for part B. For part B, I need to discuss how they were different. So the different outcomes deals with the constitutionality of the Establishment Clause. I'm going to start with the question or, or the case that they presented. In Galloway versus Green, the court ruled that there was no violation of the Establishment Clause and that the actions of the board meetings were constitutional. So I am saying that here it was constitutional. That then gives me a highlight that I better talk about how Engel v. Vital, something was unconstitutional. And so now I just need to explain why the court or how the court ruled the actions of the board meetings were constitutional. And I'm really just gonna use their descriptions to reiterate my reasoning. The court ruled this because they stated that the legislative prayer in this situation lent gravity to public business, reminded lawmakers, and blah, 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 um, thus not violating the establishment clause. So I'm basically using the scenario that they provided to answer the question on how they ruled that this was not a violation use the AP scenario to your advantage, okay? Now, what you have to be able to do here is then remember what Engel v. Vital was about and explain how it ruled that something was unconstitutional. Um, and this is just gonna have to come straight from memory. Um, this is different from the outcome of Engel v. Vital where the court ruled that the actions taken by the New York State School Board did violate the Establishment Clause and were unconstitutional. And now I need to explain my why. The court stated that the government agencies should not be writing prayers for students to recite in a mandatory fashion. They said that by writing the prayers and making students uh, do that, that that violates the establishment clause uh, and basically that state, that government must be neutral when it comes to religion. And then I have to finalize my answer by closing the loop. This is how the outcomes of the two cases are different. And again, that closing of the loop has to just be very simple and explain what you just did. So again, because it was different, one of the cases ruled that something was constitutional, one ruled that it was unconstitutional, and you have to explain uh, the court's reasoning on how they got there. For part C, I, I said earlier on 
that this is one where there are potentially multiple right answers. Um, what are some of the things that you can do as a citizen if you disagree with a Supreme Court decision? And I brainstormed uh, four uh, as I was going through and thinking about what uh, what citizens can do. And the good thing is, is that if they ask this type of question anywhere else on any of the four, these are some of the things that you as a citizen have a right to do. And you can utilize this type of answer really with anything that asks about what you have the ability to do or rights that you have as a citizen. So first off, I could protest using my First Amendment right. Uh, I could protest at any local, state, or federal government entity. Um, and basically, I could explain how I could pick it. Uh, I could uh, gather a group and we could uh, march from one area to another to bring attention to this. Um, other First Amendment rights is I could write a letter to the editor of my local, state, or uh, federal news uh, entity. Um, I can post on social media to drum up uh, attention. Uh, so basically what I'm doing is I'm utilizing my First Amendment rights of either speech uh, or uh, the ability to redress grievances uh, in order to display my disagreement with the Supreme Court decision. Number two, I can work to elect member or I can elect members myself uh, of the legislative or executive branches who want to change the underlying law. Um, so if I don't like the Supreme Court decision, Congress always has the ability to write a new law or edit a law uh, that was discussed by the Supreme Court. Or I could uh, elect members of the executive branch who would then appoint new judges that might have a different viewpoint of this. And so my answer would have to explain uh, just what I, I said about how my electing or working to elect members would then uh, be able to demonstrate my disagreement with the Supreme Court decision. I can join an interest group uh, who wants to see the law or decision changed. And that interest group can uh, do either one or two or other things that interest groups do. And I would have to explain that in my answer. Finally, I could myself bring up another lawsuit to see if I could get uh, courts to change or potentially get it all the way to the Supreme Court to see if I could get a different ruling. Um, obviously, this is going to take a lot longer and uh, is, is usually less successful once the Supreme Court makes a decision, but I still have this right nonetheless. Um, and so they're not asking uh, what is the most likely to bring about a different decision. The question is just asking, what do I have the right to do if I disagree with the Supreme Court decision? And this is obviously one of the uh, abilities that I have. I have the ability to initiate a lawsuit. Um, and so these are just four, and depending on making sure that if you explain them correctly, all four of these could correctly uh, demonstrate uh, rights that you have if you disagree with a Supreme Court decision. Um, so there you go. That's why uh, students love the SCOTUS decision. Um, it's a lot easier to predict what you're going to have to do. Uh, there is some memorization that deals with this, uh, but you know what you have to do going into it. Um, and really only one of the three questions is a wild card. Um, and so um, they could also ask you about what one branch could do against another branch. I've seen questions that ask that. So what could the legislative branch do if they don't like what the Supreme Court has done? Or what could the executive branch do if they didn't like what a Supreme Court decision has done? And so uh, those are other types of questions that you could see for this Part C question. But questions A and B are most likely going to be the same. Um, and so that allows students to at least have a better idea of what's coming into the SCOTUS comparison question. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me any comments and uh, be looking forward to some of my other episodes on other essays from AP Gov. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned and, and got the necessary tips and techniques to score well on the AP SCOTUS question.